In this video, we're going to talk about something called swaps. The idea of a swap is, is pretty easy. So let me, show you, uh, let me show you what the idea is with the timeline. Uh, so we're going to start with some set of payments. And a swap, all a swap does is it swaps one set of payments for another set of payments. Now, generally, the, I, the context that we're in is that the original set of payments, so these, these payments that we start with, maybe are non-level payments. And then we want to swap those for a set of payments where those payments are level. So we set, swap a set of non-level payments for a set of level payments. And that's the context that I'm going to be in for the rest of, uh, for the, rest of the video. Okay, now when I say swap the payments, well, we want to do so in a fair way. So what is a, what is a fair way? Well, a fair way would, to, to, would be if we did so in such a way that at time zero, the present value of the payments were equal to each other. So the present value of the original payments, uh, well, let me, let me mention before I, I, sh I give you that expression for the present value of the original set of payments, is that we're going to be in the context in these swaps we're going, to be, we're going to be in the context of a term structure of interest rates. So, uh, so the present value of the, of the original set of payments at time one, I have a payment of cap C sub one. I discount it from time one back to time zero by multiplying by a V sub one. I got to add my decorations to the Vs here because I'm in the context of term structure of interest rates. The payment at time two, I need to multiply by a V sub two squared, a V squared with respect to the two year spot rate and the payment at time three, I multiply by a V sub three Q. So that would be uh, what's on the screen now is going to be the present value of the original set of payments. And I want to set that equal to the present value of the level set of payments. Now, uh, students are, 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 are generally uh, a lot of times you're tempted to write the present value of that level set of payments as a cap C times an A angle three. And that would be correct in module three, but as I just said, we're in the context of a term structure of interest rates. So I'm not assuming that we have a flat yield curve. So you shouldn't be using uh, annuity notation. You're just going to have to value each payment like I did with the original set of payments. So when I value each payment on the level set of payments, the payment at time one, I need to discount back by multiplying by a V sub one. The payment at time two, I multiply by a V sub two squared. The payment at time three, I multiply by a V sub three cubed. I'm doing a three year swap here of course you could extend this to however many uh, how many periods you have uh, but I'm just assuming that I have three payments uh, this is these these problems are typically very uh, 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 calculation intensive you got a lot of calculator stuff to do. So for that reason, you, you're, le you're not likely to see anything longer than maybe a, uh, uh, a swap of four payments. I don't think I've maybe five payments tops, uh, but not anything. They're not going to ask you to do a swap where you have 20 payments involved. OK, so this is the equation. Well, let me back up. The, what's typically unknown in this type of an equation is the cap C value. You normally know what the original non-level set of payments are, and you want to swap them for this level set of payment, uh, set of level payments, and I don't know what that level payment is. So the cap C is what I, I generally don't know here. So uh, it's very easy to solve for this equation for cap C. Just factor out a cap C on the right-hand side of the equation and divide by the rest, and you get what, what, that, uh, what that value cap C is, and that value is called the swap price. Okay, so now you're, you're typically, uh, in this context, you're, you, you have one set of payments, you're swapping for another set of payments, so there's, there's like two people involved in the transaction, and we have words to describe the two people. The payer of a swap is the person who pays the fixed swap price. So they will be paying the cap C value and receiving the uh, cap C sub one, the cap C sub two, and the cap C sub three values. That's the payer. And the other person on the opposite end of the transaction from the payer is the receiver. The, rec the payer is paying the fixed swap price, so the receiver is receiving the fixed swap price. And in turn, the receiver is paying the non-level payments. We have this idea called the net swap, uh, the net swap payment. Uh, it's the amount received minus the amount paid. So um, let's let me. It's very, very practical to talk about the net swap payment. So let's talk about. Let's look at a, a certain time. Uh, period. In fact, let, let's let's do some. Let's be very specific. Let's look at time two, 
And let's say that at time two, the, uh, the, the part of the varying payments at time two, the payment at time two would be 40, and, the, and we were swapping for a level set of payments that were all 50. So let's say that's our, our situation. Um, all right, and now let's, uh, let's say that we're looking at the payer's perspective. Let's say that we're the payer. Remember, we're, as the payer, we're going to pay the, the, the fixed price, and we're going to receive the, uh, the non-level payments. So I'm assuming that 40 is part of the non-level payments, that the CAP C1 and the CAP C3 are not both equal to 40. The 40 is part of the non-level payments. So we're going to, as the payer, let's put ourselves in the perspective of the payer. As a payer, we're going to uh, we're going to pay the 50 and receive the 40. So when we pay an amount, I'm going to put that in red. And if we receive amount, I'm going to put that in green. So uh, green for, for money, we're get, getting that money. We're getting the green and we're paying the red. So at time four, at time two, I'm sorry, at time two, we're going to be, uh, as the payer, at time two, we're going to get 40 and pay 50. Now, if if you were in a, again, I mentioned this just a second ago, the net swap payment, the idea is very practical. If you were in a swap agreement where you were going to get $40 from somebody and then turn around and pay them $50, would you, would you literally make them pay you $40 and then you turn around and literally give them $50? No, that's not what you would do. You would say, oh, uh, you're, you're going to pay me 40, I'm going to pay you 50, so the net there is that I'm going to pay you 10. That's what the net swap payment is calculating for us. So we take the amount we receive, in this case, so in this last expression at the bottom of the screen, the amount we receive is 40. We subtract from that the amount we pay, which is 50. That's going to be a negative 10. The swap for us as the payer being negative means that we're going to owe $10 at time two. So again, very practical idea. Uh, don't get lost in the notation, the, the formulas and stuff like that. Just think about what's going on here. And, and um, you know, you take the amount you're gonna, you're gonna receive, you subtract off the amount that you're gonna, that you're gonna pay. Uh, that tells you what the net payment is going to be. And that's in, in, in all practical terms, that's what you're going to actually physically do with, with, the, uh, with the other person in the, in the swap agreement. Okay, so uh, technically then, if we go back to the net swap payment, the formula for at time K is we take the amount that we receive, that's a cap C sub K, and we subtract off the amount that we pay. Uh, uh, that's going to be uh, the cap C as the, from the payer's uh, standpoint, and so that's going to be the formula then for uh, the net swap payment at time K. That's going to be the formula for the payer. The receiver is on the opposite end. Well, so the receiver, you just switch switch the terms around. You do the, the difference in, you switch the terms in the difference. So uh, the net swap payment at time K for the receiver would be the, uh, the negative of the net swap payment for the payer. So if the payer owes 10, the receiver is receiving 10, being paid 10. Okay, so now for the rest of the video, I want to talk about a special case of swaps called interest rate swaps. And interest rate swaps are, again, the idea is not, not is, they're, they're technically swaps, uh, and they're swaps in the sense that all of the payments that you're swapping are going to be interest amounts. So the amount of the payment at time one will be an interest amount at time one, the payment at time two, the interest amount at time two, and so forth. Now remember to calculate the interest amount at time one, it's based off of the uh, of a dollar amount at time zero, and the name for that dollar amount would be the notional amount. So the notional amount at time k, and, and we denote that with a cap N sub K, is the amount of money on which interest is calculated for the following period. So let's look at the period going from time zero to time one. How would you calculate the interest amount at time one? Well, first of all, to go from time zero to time one, I use a one-year spot rate. And so what I would do is I take the no notional amount at time zero and multiply times that one-year spot rate. So the cap I, at time one, the cap I1 value, the interest amount at time one will be the notional amount at time zero times the one-year spot rate. 
And if I go from time one to time two, I do so there by using a forward rate from time one to time two. So the interest at time two, the amount of interest at time two will be the notional amount at time one times that forward rate from time one to time two. And likewise, from time two to time three, I use the forward rate to go from time two to time three. That's the AEIR. And so the, notion, the, the interest amount at time three will be the notional amount at time two times that forward rate from time two to time three. So those are the, the, the rate, those are the amounts that I'm going to to, to want to swap. Um, and and let, before I move on, look at the payments at time two and time three. And if I had more payments at time four and time five and so forth, they would look very similar to the payments at time two and time three. And notice that the payment at time one looks a little bit different. However, if I look at the the, the going from time zero to time one, I, I do use the one year spot rate, but I could define the forward rate from time zero to time one to be that one year spot rate. And then the payment at time one, if I substitute in, instead of writing it as a, as a notional amount at time zero times a one year spot rate, if I write it as the notional amount times the forward rate from time zero to time one, Again, just recognizing that the forward rate from time zero to time one is the one year spot rate, then I, I get a I get things extended. I get an extension of the of the uh, uh, of the way the payments look at times two and three and so forth. Okay, so now what is an interest rate swap? An interest rate swap swaps a non-flat yield curve for a flat yield curve. So I'm assuming those forward rates are not equal to one another, and I want to swap swap in a way such that the forward rates are all equal to each other, and I'll use an I as that. So the payment at time K is swapped for a payment of uh, the, the corresponding notional amount times just an I. So the payment at time one, I swap for the uh, a notional amount at time zero times I. Uh, payment at time two, uh, I use uh, a forward rate from time one to two of I. Uh, at time three, I use a forward rate from time two to time three of I, so I get a payment of the notional amount of time two times I. So I, I swap it for uh, a, a fixed interest rate. So that's what an interest rate swap is. Now, uh, uh, one thing I'll point out is that those amounts uh, at the top of the timeline, at times one, two, and three, they may not all be equal. Even though they're all multiplied by I, the notional amounts might not be equal. So uh, as a dollar amount, they might not be equal to one another. But we'll come back to that uh, in just a second. Okay, and this I that I calculate is called a, uh, is called a swap rate. Okay, now the payer, as before, the payer, uh, the payer in this context pays the fixed interest rate and receives the variable interest rate, and then the receiver is on the other end, so the receiver receives the fixed interest rate and pays the variable interest rate. I also, again, have a net swap payment. It's the amount received minus the amount paid, and so at time K, I'll use two as the example. I'm going to, uh, from the payer's perspective, the payer is going to pay at the, uh, the pay the fixed interest rate. The payer is going to pay the expression that has the I in it and receive the expression that has the forward rate in it. And so uh, I've highlighted in green what we're going to receive as the payer and in red what we're going to pay out as the payer. And notice that in that last expression, both of them are going to depend on the notional amount uh, at time K minus 1. You can factor that out. And that's what your formula would be for the, uh, the net swap payment at time K for the payer. Uh, the net swap payment for the receiver is just the negative of that, so I can I can uh, 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 I can get that. I can uh, acknowledge that by taking what's in parentheses and switching the uh, switching the terms that's in parentheses. I don't really think you need to memorize these formulas. I think you need to go through the the, the process uh, just like with like Macaulay duration and some of these other formulas. I think it's better just to to go through the process, think through it, and go through the process. Okay, so here's my uh, here's my swap. Uh, here's all the payments that I want to swap. And remember, what a swap does is it swaps them in a fair way. And the fair way is that the present value of the two payment streams are going to be equal to each other. So if I take the present value of the original set of payments, in both cases, uh, if I, I start with the original set of payments and then I can uh, look at the present value of the swapped set of payments, in both cases, you're going to uh, discount from time one back to time zero by multiplying by a V sub one, from time two back to time zero by multiplying by a V sub two squared, and from time three back to time zero by multiplying by a V sub three cubed. So that's the present value of the payments that are the original set of payments. 
and then in red now are going to be the present value of the swapped set of payments. And I want to solve for I. Generally, I is what you're not going to know. And so when I solve for I, which is very easy to do, I just factor out an I on the right-hand side and divide by everything else. I get this, I get this equation here. Again, I don't suggest you memorize this equation. Just go through the thought process. I've just done it generally. Um, uh, but but you just go through the, the process each time. And, and this I is called a swap rate. So a lot of the problems and most of the problems, this type of problem, you're going to be asked, what is the swap rate? Now, in the next video, I'm going to look at a special case of uh, interest rate swaps. Um, and uh, that's likely to show up. If you see these problems, it's likely to show up in this special case that I'm going to show you uh, in the next video. Okay, so I'll see you then.